see, oh, I see Thomas got on. I didn't realize he was there and showing up up top. Uh, well, with that, I will go ahead and call to order the uh, regular EDC meeting of February 9th and uh, jump right into uh, director's comments. So uh, I'll just start here kind of to the right of my little thumbnail. Joe, do you have any comments? Uh, no, I'll just wait till I think it's my my turn to talk about the, um, the policy. Okay. Appreciate that. Um, Mike, do you have any comments? Um, no, other than if anybody wants to join me for prime rib, I won $750 Super Bowl. I'm buying. <laughs> Don't spend it all in one spot. <laughs> Man. Okay. Johnny, do uh, you have anything? Uh, just, um, I sent the financial snapshot around as usual. Um, you're kind of muffled. I don't know if it's just me, but. Can you hear me? Uh, do you have a microphone? Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll come back around to you, Johnny. How about you, Thomas? Well, I've been um, chasing center point and <laughs> honestly, it's kind of like herding wet cats. Um, uh, they, the last I have from them now is like we will we are still putting uh, together a plan and drafting and brainstorming this one. After we look at it, we should have a better idea of the scope and design time. I'll let you know soon. Um, I've been trying to quantify what that means. Are we talking we days, weeks, months, this year? And that's what I got to reply. Yeah, that's that's some yeah. good center point <laughs> center point corporate speak there. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, appreciate you continuing to badger them, though. Uh, Don, do you have anything? Uh, I was just wondering what uh, transpired, I guess, with the uh, palm trees or the removal of those in the main on the Clear Lake Road, if, uh, or unless it's on the agenda. Item. I think it's, a, yeah, that, we'll, we'll okay. catch that one here in just a minute with a separate yeah. agenda item. Yeah, no, I'm good. And uh, so then, uh, Amanda, I saw you had... You were on? I don't have any comments tonight, thanks. Okay. And then, uh, Johnny, do you have sound? Can you hear me okay? Yes, much better. Okay. I think some little boys were pulling on wires at some point. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I sent the snapshot around. Uh, if you had a chance to look at it, again, let me know if you all ever want me to add or remove anything or have any comments. And uh, oh, also, that is helpful. Uh, it is helpful to see that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good to see at a glance just how things are going. Uh, also, Charles and I had a, a conference call with the attorneys about Galveston Bay Brewing, and I, it's not on the agenda, um, but things are progressing and figuring out how uh, that's going to go down with uh, license agreements. Yeah, <clears throat> little uh, little legal craftsmanship uh, remaining to be done, but uh, we'll make some headway. And I think in the meantime, they're moving forward full speed ahead uh, with their work on the brewery side and uh, haven't been terribly focused on this piece of it, but I'm sure they'll they'll wake up here soon enough and, and uh, their hair will be on fire to have this in place. So we wanna be mm -hmm. a step ahead of them. Um, Okay, great. I uh, hope I, did, I didn't miss anyone, I don't think. Um, well, then, uh, with that, do we have any unscheduled visitors uh, that would like to speak? Okay, there being none, then we shall move to the consent agenda. Uh, if everybody's had a chance to look at the uh, financials, the 20, uh, January 21 uh, check register, and the minutes of our last meeting on January 12th. <clears throat> if uh, I could have a motion to approve the consent agenda items. I'll make that motion. Thomas makes a motion. I'll second. Uh, we have a second. I'll second. And Joe seconds. There, is there any discussion? Uh, I just had comment on the uh, checks that went out. Um, Get what the total amount. What's well, that, Don? I'm sorry. Uh, on those checks that went out, was that for drawer? 
Let me go the, back and look at that. We had three checks that went out. Uh, substantial. That Let's I saw. see. Maybe I'm I'm looking at the check register, which only has. <clears throat> It's not on the check register. You have to look at the debits on the uh, Wells Fargo account. It didn't show up on the check register for whatever reason. The hundred thousand and the two hundred thousand dollar check. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I understand. Uh, they and then there was one for I think the attorney, uh, but the but the other three hundred thousand. Um, <clears throat> so just so I understand, that went. Did all that go for the uh, drawer? The three hundred all went to drawer. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's what yeah. I thought. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so if there are no other questions, then uh, all in favor, aye. 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 Uh, any opposed, nay. Uh, being none, motion passes unanimously. Uh, so then, Joe, if you want to give us the update, I, I, I guess Brent's not on tonight. Yeah, I guess that's true. Okay. So, uh, I'm here. But I know he had mentioned that oh, there had oh, been. He's here. Oh, is he? Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. So I did talk to um, Susie this morning. Uh, she gave me an update, and um, you know, it's it's not good on the bejewels. Uh, we do have some termites. Yep. We do have boars. Uh, she thinks, you know, two or three of them could snap. Hmm. Uh, there's no, you know, she couldn't be definitive. But um, she did send to send to Brent a a plan, you know, to uh, use insecticides and other things to 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 help uh, these, uh, you know, fertilizer and whatnot to make them survive. Um, Brent, I think we agreed that this was more of a, a city council kind of thing situation. Um, he could probably elaborate a little bit more on that. But uh, I want to say it was going to be about four grand to um, to do a maintenance. Is that about right, Brent? Yeah, it was it was uh, about forty five hundred dollars, and uh, that was just including some of the uh, like the herbicides and uh, some of the treatments for the for the palms. The uh, uh, there is some concern that the, there are some with damage that is likely inside the palm and it looks healthy on the outside and it could fail. So I'm working to get those identified and uh, we've got them on. I, there was a little bit of a problem. She sent me a map of the locations, but it didn't match up. So I had to get that, uh, had to get that um, clarified. That's been clarified. And I think it's gonna come down to probably removing some some additional palms just in the, in the sake of safety. Um, just today, I also received, and uh, Joe probably talked about it, the uh, five-year palm strategy with uh, different varietals and things like that and the cost to do so. So All right. I haven't gotten to that part, Brent. I do have, I don't know if we can share the screen. I can show you what that looks like if you guys want to want to look at it now, or I can send it out to everybody and you can kind of digest it. It's up to you. I'd like to see it. Yeah. Joe, just, see just a quick, quick question. You know, it, I mean, are we, are we wasting money and just trying to save what we have as opposed to just realize that we should have chosen something else and then just make the gradual change as it happens? Uh, I'm, I'm, no, I'm yeah. no Paul, I'm no Paul, expert. I think we would have to, maybe we should, uh, bring Susie on and, and, and have you ask those kind of tough questions to her. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a kind of a, I don't, I don't know. I think if it's going to snap, I would think it would happen in a high wind situation. Um, she didn't, she didn't say, I didn't get the impression from her, like, yeah, these got to be chopped down right away. I got more of the impression from her is like, Let's let's do this preventive, you know, medication. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it kills. But I, I didn't. She didn't say anything about. Yeah, you need to cut these things down right away. I didn't. Hit, she didn't say anything like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. 
and she also uh, <clears throat> she's also awaiting uh, a detailed report of exactly what's going on with with foam. She had sent some samples uh, to Texas A and M, and uh, they are reviewing those, and they're supposed to have a very detailed report that would likely make sense to Susie, but not to me. But um, you know, she can offer her insight after that as well. So we're waiting kind of a test, uh, a sampling. So is there anything, uh, Joe or Brent, you think that we couldn't defer to the next meeting and then bring Susie in to really give us, and, and we can take action on it then, uh, although we wouldn't take action on the medication or the, the treatment. Yeah, the, ma the maintenance of those palms and the, and the regular maintenance, that will be, a, that's a city function. Um, right. uh, it's not, you know, may, maybe installation of new palms if, uh, you know, funds were available, that could be an EDC quality of life thing, but maintenance uh, would definitely be with the city. And, uh, you know, looking forward at maybe some of these projects, maybe we get a forward plan and, and together where we can identify the costs on the front end. And, and you know, we, we kind of focus on, on what's needed right now and uh, we move forward and let's try to plan, you know, Kind of look into the crystal ball and say, okay, they're not going to live forever. Um, what's the life lifespan of a palm, and uh, what can we do to, I don't know, get them to last longer or plan for that inevitable <clears throat> inevitability of them falling over, or decaying, right. or right. Flat no, does I mean, she does she identify the medules that are? Do we know which ones they are? Yes, she and but the her the numbers that she gave me, she's identified them by number. And uh, there's, I believe there's uh, 19 of them up there now, um, different palm trees, not just medjules, but some other ones right. that she inventoried and, and looked at. The, uh, as far as- I mean, not, not to I be insensitive, but is it, does it just happen to be the one that's on the other side is one of the bad ones for symmetry? It's, uh, yeah, it looks like they're, the, the ones that are mostly affected are the ones closest to the intersection. And that kind of makes sense with the fact that we lost those palms in the center of the, of the median as well. So mm. if it, you know, it's uh, termites or whatever, however they get around, they crawl underground and they tunnel and then they, they come up when they find food. That perfect that makes sense to me. But um, yeah, they seem to be right there at the front entrance. Well, the I think undoubtedly all of this just shows, I think doing the assessment, we may not like what we're finding out, but it's it's why it was important to do that. And, and we'll just kind of have to process it as we go forward. And I think as you say, Brent, it really will inform our landscape planning going forward that we contemplate those costs or the life cycle of these things. And don't just assume that you're planting a live oak that'll be there for the next hundred years. So, um, so maybe we bring Susie in on the next meeting, Joe, if that's okay. Yeah, I think it makes yeah. sense. I think that'd be great. Uh, then, uh, uh, Brent, you have an update uh, on the the redesign of the lighting based on the the uh, value engineering that that Don proposed. Yeah, currently we have that. You know, we haven't done an RFP necessarily for it, but we wanted to ballpark some costs and, and get an idea of what it was going to be. So uh, that's currently with some contractors. I think we have it out to three that we've done work with in the past with the city, just uh, trying to identify kind of to ballpark that number um, minus the actual poles and the, and the lighting heads that I think we would purchase separately from a vendor that Don identified. And I wanna say that that magic number is around uh, eight or $9,000 for the parks. I remember right might be even a little less now that we've so what do you think our timing would be then for getting that pricing in and, and do we have to re do we did we formally revise the plan or do they are they just looking at kind of the markup of the original plan no they did they did uh, they formally revised the plan and submitted a stamp drawing with that okay. change so so we get that pricing in and i guess we probably will approve that next meeting yes and part of the part of the pricing is, you know, if uh, you exceed fifty thousand dollars, then it, it kicks into a uh, kind of a bid, contract bid situation. And I'm trying to find out if that's going to be below that threshold. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, and so then, hopefully, we can add to that. Uh, 
Sorry, Charles. Yeah, no. Did, did we uh, get that out to the uh, like a framing contractor for the the platform that needs to be built? And did we involve the concrete contractor to drill the piers? Those those piers are huge. And, yeah, uh, that's a separate you know guy altogether uh, we, on those two things. So we got that covered, right? Well, we didn't. We didn't send it to. We didn't send it to three different independent contractors to try to coordinate that. We we picked we picked uh, electrical contractors that could subcontract that out as part of a package, and we wanted to okay. see what that price was. Sure. Okay. Not, gotcha. Clean three. Thank you. Okay. So, well, if we get any pricing information in, then in advance, uh, just the ballpark pricing, we'll circulate that. Kind of with everybody in advance of the meeting and then perhaps we can vote on it next meeting and and if we're under the 50 we can <clears throat> we can kind of get on with the rat killing relative to getting that lot lighting i think that would be i think the consensus is we want to do that as quickly as possible as assuming we have a good plan and a good price is that fair no no objections to that strategy Oh, that's a great strategy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Charles, I, I would just, uh, just as a side note on all this, I know we hadn't looked at lighting in the other parking lot, um, in the other right. side of Okies and Skippers. And I don't know, I know we've got, we don't have any money, um, but should we put that kind of on our radar screen to take a look at to see if we need it? I'm not sure. I don't, not out there every day or driving at night or any of that. What's the sense that on that? Be a conversation that we have tomorrow night at our EDC and city council workshop, because it's not up to us to pay for that. That's going to yeah. be on city council. And so I think they need to hear our thoughts around that and they need to share their thoughts and, and decide whether or not that's a funding priority. <clears throat> or, or Plaza 1006, who's the owner right. of that. Yeah. Yeah, the other question would be, uh, is that primarily, do we think that's primarily used by valet parking for shapers or is it for customer parking there generally? I've parked in there uh, just going to shapers because there was no place else to park and there mm -hmm. would have to be a space available, but it's pretty packed. Um, I don't yeah. know how often it's, it's full like that, but it seems to be like the first parking lot that gets full. Which... Um, uh, I hate to raise this, but Johnny and I were talking about this with the attorneys this afternoon on the uh, uh, Lee track lot and preserving the right, uh, even to the extent that we grant uh, parking rights to that lot, that we reserve the right to perhaps impose uh, metered or paid parking at some point, because we may need to think about a revenue stream for the ongoing maintenance, cleaning, lighting and repair of these things that's separate from just the good graces of the city because this could get pretty burdensome pretty pretty quickly so sure i can yeah, see that I, I don't know what the answer is but it's just a, a yeah. put a pin in it for further discussion sure uh, so thanks brent and then uh, just kind of touch maybe the update on the pedestrian crosswalk is that it's all done i've seen it operational at a time or two, not as many people standing there hitting the button. So I, I don't, uh, but it looks good. Yeah, they, uh, it's functional, it's working. I think the only thing that I may add is, and I hadn't planned on this because I thought it would look different. Uh, it was hard to visualize what the signage was gonna look like uh, once it was in place. We had some obstructions in the line of sight that we had to move. Uh, now that we have that, uh, I think the only thing that would improve that is maybe a couple more directional arrows that point to the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. Currently, we have one on each side of the of the crosswalk in the traveling on the traveling lane side um, as you're approaching on the approach lane. So uh, it'd be on the right side coming in on the right side leaving. So uh, maybe two of those small arrows and put that in there. I have it have it earmarked uh, probably to touch up the striping when we go back for stop blocks and some uh, parallel striping, uh, parking striping. So that will uh, take place. And uh, I've, I've actually tried it in the daylight 
um, it's been uh, maybe a little dangerous. I thought somebody stopped for me, but they were just busy on their phone and they were gonna turn down Aspen. So I took one step off. Things were flashing, but they stopped and got walloped. I've spoken to the uh. police about that. And I think at night, and that was before we had the additional, the couple of the big crosswalk signs in place. I think at night, it lights up pretty well. The daytime's a little, maybe a little difficult. So it might might take a little bit of uh, some maybe traffic education as opposed to necessarily enforcement and um, right. help some people out and get, get the word out that way. And once it's all put together, we also plan on rolling that out in uh, social media to explain that and we can we can post that to uh, our Facebook. That'd be great. Any other observations on it? Just any anyone else that I haven't seen it, it or... yet, but Brent, you're kind of hard to miss. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I tried to pick a fancy car to you know get <laughs> there you go. Well thank that, you. Um that's... The next item kind of is related to uh, all prior discussions, and I don't have a specific plan other than, I guess it was a couple of weeks ago, I uh, was coming in, I guess, on Saturday, early Saturday morning, and it had been raining that, that night, and we had a fair bit of ponding in the, in the lot, and you, it just seemed to accentuate some of the broken concrete that we had left in place there so that we didn't disturb the the underground storage tank and, and the, you know, the conversations that we've had ad nauseum about that. But uh, with that ponding and some of the rutting that was still occurring along the edges, particularly the head end spaces along uh, Clear Lake Road, it, it, it just occurred to me that we may be at a place uh, where we need to begin to think about paving that lot because when we did the whole milling strategy it was thinking that that was we were just kind of holding that lot uh, until uh, higher and better use came along but I think we're we're quickly getting to the place as we've all discussed that it's it's going to be a de facto long-term parking lot as such maybe the millings aren't the best long-term option and if not or at least we need to address those areas where the concrete is. And I think Brent was, you were investigating whether or not we could pull up any of that concrete without disturbing the, the soil in a way that might trigger a, a remediation effort. Yeah, I believe we touch anything that's, that's anchored like that slab, we're gonna have to deal with at least the, the, the single known tank that I don't know if there's any more there. So there is a, there is an underground storage tank there. Uh, we can't just simply, uh, you know, pave over the top of it and forget it's there. Uh, once you start pulling the slab, then it would require remediation. And I confirmed that with uh, Kevin and uh, building as well. Okay, and that was so. for going with the millings, it was kind of multifaceted. I think it was, you know, partially, hey, we can right. reuse this. It's a reusable material. And if we don't do any major uh, construction, we we know that that tank's there, it's marked, uh, you know, it's on our drawings and we'll just stay clear of it. So we'll also add that with uh, with the electrical plan that uh, that won't come in any, uh, won't come close to where the location of that tank is and, and it's just a, a trenching. And uh, also kind of uh, concurrently, we're, we're gathering some, uh, we're gathering some data for trying to identify costs to fix some of those low spots. Um, and then also along Clear Lake Road, where currently it's a green strip of grass, uh, pulling that up, doing some, probably going to have to do some lime stabilization in there. And then uh, similar with the millings, at least initially. But, uh, you know, the, uh, so we're, we're looking at a couple of different things, trying to plan plan ahead and gotcha. uh, and maybe that makes the most sense i um uh, yeah i think undoubtedly it makes the most sense just make the best of what we have but and maybe in another year we start thinking about it and and i still believe that was the right strategy given what we knew at the time um and uh, i would have been hard pressed to have invested five or six hundred thousand dollars in that lot um then but but we may need to 
maybe it's two years from now we start thinking about that, but it was just a discussion because it didn't look, it, it wasn't as serviceable in that area as I think we all want it to be. It's kind of a conclusion. You can, you can also do it in sections. The, the west lot has uh, some larger concrete aprons on the entry points from 2094 and Aspen. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's a similar construction, um, but it, they, they placed uh, concrete in those kind of high traffic zones, people pulling it in and turning it off. So maybe that's you know something that could be looked at doing it in sections. It does create a little bit of a problem when you drop off of that hard surface and you go into the go into the millings. It creates a creates right. a, and we're also uh, with the with the west lot looking at uh, resurfacing that and getting those those ruts fixed. Got it. Um, okay, thank you very much. Uh, if anybody else had any further comments on that. And then uh, we really, we've got our workshop, joint workshop with the city council tomorrow night, and it is looking forward and doing strategic planning for both the city and ADC. Um, I sent everyone uh, a few minutes before the meeting started uh, the uh, pick chart that um, mayor had prepared last year after our last joint session that was kind of a, a menu of all possible projects for us just as a reminder uh, and then i also sent our current sources and uses statement that i haven't updated but it has not changed materially uh, indicating that we're pretty well uh, cash strapped for the balance of the year unless something changes materially relative to one of our big commitments and that would probably be the draw road contribution and i think that's still to be determined brent i assume uh whether we are going to achieve any savings off that 350 number uh, that's the big plug so to some extent what we can do for the balance of this year and into the first part of 22 it's kind of predetermined by we ain't got no money um, but I don't want that to, I mean, we can, we, we can still look at, at what's out there for us to do. I don't, I hate to just be treading water for the next year. Um, so I don't know if, uh, maybe Adri, if you could let me, uh, control the screen and then I, I can think you start. have, you have the ability to oh, do I that. Do. Right okay. Mm -hmm. And so let me see if I can get to that. Can everybody see this? Is that? You may have to sh hit share screen down. At yeah. The bottom. Oh, okay. Can you see the icon? It's next to chat. There you go. Okay, so can you see it now? Yes, sir. Okay, and so this was, uh, again, the chart that we looked at last year, uh, and, you know, the, the items that were identified as green were those that we felt, you know, had the highest payoff to uh, difficulty ratio, and uh, uh, so we can review those. Uh, you can see number one, we're still looking and Thomas was talking about relocating the overhead utilities. Uh, we have not addressed really items two, three, and four. Uh, my comment would be those are things that we can hit pause on. They'd be nice to have, but not got to have. Um, and we certainly don't have the money for those. Similarly for uh, five, six, and seven, uh, though we did just talk about the lighting. Uh, but again, to Amanda's point, we neither have the funding available, nor maybe we're the, should be the primary source of that funding. Uh, Brent, I think you mentioned that you're going to be doing the parallel parking there on uh, the striping on Aspen as part of the crosswalk restriping. Yeah, that's one of the things I'm, I would look at. I want to make sure that we don't uh, impede how that how that street's being used, but I, I think we can put some parallel spots in there. And originally, there was some consideration with Galveston Bay Brewing Company 
if we were going to, uh, um, I guess, allow like that limited use of the cul-de-sac. So um, just some of those questions. And, and I don't know if both sides of the road make sense or just the south side of the road makes most, more sense. Gotcha. Uh, repairs and upgrades to the farmer's market. That's probably one where upgrades, I guess we'd be allowed to do uh, by law. Uh, repairs, generally not. Uh, I think we can we can still work on the removal of the chain link fence. Um, we just may have to deputize Ronnie to go have that conversation. Uh, the uh, O2 parking lot improvements. I think they have effectively made some of those themselves kind of on the low end of the scale with the with the rustic landscape creosote timber outline, but uh, that, that's a different discussion. Uh, uh, 12 and 13 are obviously red and low yield, high cost. Um, Pedestrian bridge, uh, something everybody would love to have, but prohibitively hey, expensive. Hey, Charles, I, I did um, I did have a discovery meeting with uh, Balkan Pier, and he with is, whom I'm sorry, Joe. With with was it Balkan Pier, Pier and Balk? Oh yes, yeah, name, yeah. And uh, he's going to uh, work up a little design and give us some pricing, just so we have a an idea of how much it would cost. Uh, to do something like that. Yeah, excellent. And and maybe our role in that ultimately will be to do some preliminary design slash chase the grants uh, or kind of spearhead that, certainly not fund it, but <clears throat> maybe handle some of the upfront costs. So I think that's something citizens would certainly like to see. Sidewalk to Watergate, that's uh, neither achievable nor cost effective at this point. Uh, I think we have we put a temporary pause on the facade improvement grants for businesses without a better strategy for allocating those. I mean, we can revisit that, but I don't know that it's a major uh, initiative this year. Uh, similarly, elevation grants for new businesses is expensive and, and not achievable. Website updates. Um, Honestly, don't recall what we were thinking on that. Maybe Johnny, you do, but uh, it was a blue anyway. Uh, town center rebranding. I think we determined that was maybe more difficult than beneficial. Uh, Clear Lake Shores marketing campaign. We we have talked about that. I think we still believe that to be important. It may have to be more modest over the next few months, but. Uh, Amanda is working on some cost efficient ways to, to accomplish that. So I think that remains a priority. Uh, bike racks, done, check, big check mark. Uh, like to see more people using them, but I think that it's good that they're out. They look good. Uh, drawer road and 518 signage. I think we that's a little longer term. We'll get drawer in first. Um, I did, just as an aside, I sent, <clears throat> had run some reports that I'll get distributed out to everybody that I sent to Brent, uh, tracking customer traffic for uh, Target and Home Depot and some of our other businesses and where their customers were coming from. And it was interesting how many people are really coming from the South to shop Home Depot and Target and getting out on 146 and coming back down 2094, pretty cumbersome and, and circuitous route. And it just demonstrated to me that drawer is going to be a pretty, pretty good ad for those folks, and certainly all the residential growth to the south. I think we'll get a boost out of that. Uh, it was interesting too that that uh, uh, Target performs significantly below um, there. It, I forgot now what was it rent sixty five percent of the customer traffic of the Target in League City at six forty six. Uh, Home Depot is about ninety five percent of the customer traffic at 
our, our store versus the 646 location. Uh, and that may be just, we're in more of a Walmart world. And I have not run the Walmart report, but I'll do that because I'd love to compare it to Target. But, uh, what it told me is drawers a good strategic investment for the city. Uh, city parking lot landscaping, um, we may have to manage that. I think we believe it's important, but comes after lighting and, and we'll be managing the timing of that later this year, subject to cash availability. Um, I think the farmer's market lot to Oki's pathway improvements are relatively low priority now. Oki's improvements, those have taken place without our involvement. Toxic waste drives off the table for now. Uh, pedestrian crosswalk done, glad to have that. Uh, Jarbo Bayou Boat Channel, not, not a priority. Galveston Bay Foundation partnering, not a priority. Public art, no. Uh, infrastructure plan for climate change, no. Uh, marketing services for existing businesses, that's a little bit in our marketing agenda bucket. Um, I think that uh, the EDC has done a good job of helping support our local businesses with, uh, with the ads that have run. Yeah, yeah. So uh, give that a partial check mark. You're right, yeah, there was credit there. And uh, the assessment framework for 380 agreements, that's my homework that um, I've failed at. Um, <clears throat> tree planting program, there we go, Joe, you're on it, okay. Uh, in progress. Uh, recruitment and nurturing of targeted businesses longer term, I, I don't think that's an immediate priority. Uh, incentive structure to encourage annexation, that is something I think we, we really have to brainstorm and I would probably move up to a green priority uh, for 21. Um, I don't know what that looks like. I can't remember who the conversation I was having with the other day about just how do you induce someone to come in if if there's no upside, you, you have water and sewer and you really either are already getting police services or you don't want them. And so you're going to subject yourself to potentially more taxes over time and more uh, regulation. So there's got to be some offsetting benefit beyond just saying you're in the city of Clear Lake Shores. And I don't know what that is yet, but if we want to be effective in annexation, since it's a completely voluntary process, we need to probably think about that and, and come up with a, a framework for in, inducing or, or incentivizing people to seriously consider annexation. Um, I think uh, cataloging our commercial land and buildings would be an intern activity. Um, we did assist the, the city with the acquisition of the, the track for the expansion of the city hall. That's uh, uh, a long-term project. Um, and then we've worked on uh, some enhancements to the existing parks. And I think that could remain a priority over the next year for us. We just need more engagement from them on that. Um, and then high-speed internet. We, uh, I think my wife has already signed up. So that one's a big win, though we, we were more just ultimately observational than, than instrumental. So I don't, uh, other than the things that are also, we didn't have the Shell Bottom Park improvements on this schedule last year, which we now are participating in. Uh, but again, trying to push that timing out because we, we need to make sure that we have cash to do it. Uh, I, I'm not aware of any other initiatives that we should have out there. Uh, just to let you know, I don't know if y'all knew that Marina Bay Harbor sold and there uh, I met the new owners and they are uh, revamping that entire area. They're putting about $3 million of improvements in over there, changing out all the docks, putting in fuel for the boats, redoing. Uh, there's a lot of work going on over there. Which, uh, which marina is that? Uh, marina Bay Harbor, just past the bridge that they're remodeling in Lazy Bend. 
the big dry stack store. Oh, the, the dry stack. One. Okay, got it. Yeah. So they're investing. There's a, a massive uh, capital investment that the new owners have, have invested, and 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 are investing, and they have uh, they have ten other dry stack storage systems. I don't know where they're all at, but you know it used to be run by a mom and pop shoestring budget. These guys are coming in and really going to blow that out. So um, I'm impressed with all the work they've done so far since their initial closing, which is yeah. about, probably yeah. about a month ago. Brent, uh, you know, do they uh, do they do they, are, do they charge sales tax on the rentals? I I don't know, uh, um, but they're definitely. We need to talk to them. We need to get somebody over there. Uh, are they in Kima or is that actually? No, that's that's clear, us. That is Clear Lake Shores, and uh, Kevin is already talking with them on their improvements. In fact, I think he went over there um, possibly yesterday or even today to uh, look at the revamping of the fuel system. Their plan is to put a uh, fueling station or you know. Um, Reactivate that fueling station on the point, and then also right. have a uh, a convenience store there. So, uh, yeah. So there's a, a big there's that could be the next big besides the brewery coming in. These guys coming in and making all these improvements, and they're really trying to expand their footprint that business model. Yeah, uh, so that would be a win. Yeah, that's, that's, it's a huge. Yeah, I win. think the. I'm sorry, right now. I was going to say that the typical um, rental spot, I don't think has sales tax. Like two North of Marine doesn't have sales tax for their rental, but yeah, convenience store and fuel and all that, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. We need to get over there and probably just introduce ourselves and let them know that we're here to help and, you know, yeah. whatever capacity. Excellent. Oh, good news. Really good news. Okay. Uh, well, I think we're, we're all uh, we're going to see each other again tomorrow night. Is Tomorrow night, Zoom or live? Zoom. Okay. Tomorrow is Zoom as well. Zoom as well. Okay, excellent. Well, uh, unless there are any comments on that uh, and priorities, and if there's uh, there being no further new business, we need to let and and since uh, Mike has volunteered to buy steaks and and drinks for all at T Bone Tom's, we. We'll meet him over there. We need to adjourn and get over there and order <laughs> whatever we can. I said prime rib. I didn't say drinks. <laughs> <laughs> you want us to choke to death? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, with that, we shall adjourn the meeting. Awesome. All right. Great meeting. Okay. I'll have a great hey, evening. Everybody.